All right, good morning, everyone. My name is Nancy Deutsch, and I am the director of Youth Next, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to our 10th anniversary conference, Dialoguing for Democracy, Youth Moral Reasoning, and Social Justice. And I'm actually going to um, introduce our dean, Dr. Robert Pianta, who's gonna give a few opening remarks. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome on behalf of the University of Virginia and the Curry School of Education and Human Development. Uh, just, um, I, I want to give a, um, uh, intro with a, with a, a bit of a note about that, uh, the name of the school, uh, because we, um, uh, a couple years ago, uh, we realized, uh, we used to be just the Curry School of Education. And this, uh, convening has played a great role, as has uh, the center, Youth Next, played a great role in us uh, thinking more deeply about the fact that uh, all of what we do is about human development, all of what we do is grounded in the science of human development and in promoting human development, sometimes in education systems, but as, as many of you, the, uh, you know, the work that you do is promoting the uh, human development in youth programs, communities, and even extending out into health. Uh, and so that science and the applied work uh, that follows from it uh, in programs, pre professional preparation and policy is really uh, a lot of what we are uh, attempting to embrace uh, with that shift. Uh, and about 10 years ago, this, uh, that name shift was foreshadowed um, as we looked at the scientific landscape and became uh, acutely aware that the science of adolescent development uh, was expanding and deepening and profoundly changing the way that we understood adolescence, both uh, adolescence as the youth people and adolescence uh, as the phase. And a cornerstone of that shift uh, was the recognition of youth as assets, truly uh, the notion of positive youth development and the assets that those young people uh, bring to communities and, uh, and organizations. Uh, that understanding and the knowledge base on which it rests was of profound importance, I think, for the fields of education and youth development and was explicitly and inherently interdisciplinary and cross-sector. Uh, an exciting agenda that uh, had extensions uh, from research into practice and policy, just the right kind of work for a university. Uh, so we conceived of a research center dedicated to the science of youth development and the policy and programmatic implications of youth as assets. Um, we were very fortunate as those ideas were coming together to have the opportunity to partner with leaders at Altria, particularly Jennifer Hunter and her colleagues in the design and formation of such a center which has been generously supported since. Their support has opened, also opened up collaborative opportunities with other organizations and enabled the expansion of Youth Next uh, work in important ways. And perhaps as or more importantly, we were fortunate at that time to recruit to Curry and to the university Patrick Tolan uh, to become the founding director of Youth Next, as well as a cadre of junior faculty who followed. Patrick's vision, leadership on the national and international stages, his stature as a scholar and his mentorship of a new generation of scholars formed the center quickly into one with considerable national influence and visibility, and I think created Youth Next as the kind of intellectual opportunity zone that we hoped it would be, and we're very indebted to Patrick for his leadership. Thank you, Patrick. And now we celebrate Youth Next as 10 years old uh, with this conference on the connection between positive youth development and democracy a fitting topic for the University of Virginia, uh, which, uh, whose founder very explicitly linked education and democracy. So happy birthday, Youth Next. Um, this conference is part of our commitment at the university and the Curry School to building democracy through education. We're uniquely contributing to this work through key intersections. Youth Next's connection uh, with its developmental lens and research youth assets and civic engagement, our Center for Race, Public Education in the South with its focus on illuminating and teaching the fullness of history in ways that enhance democratic ideals and participation, and our top-ranked teacher preparation programs that work to ensure the necessary skills, knowledge, and awareness for, education, for educators working on behalf of democracy. And uh, critically, youth and youth voice, their engagement and their activism 
uh, clearly have an extraordinarily important role to play, and uh, this conference uh, plays an important role in articulating that. So we're delighted uh, that our work, uh, not just here in the Curry School or with Youth Next, also connects uh, within and across the university uh, to its, the university's own uh, pan-university initiative in democracy and the new equity center that's forming uh, to uh, work more locally. So again, uh, we celebrate the work that you're doing. We appreciate uh, all of your efforts uh, being here uh, for the next couple days and look forward to what, uh, what the conference will produce. Uh, let me now turn you back to Nancy <laughs> Deutsch. Thank you. Great, thank you, Dean Pianta. So as I said, I'm Nancy Deutsch. I am the um, current director of Youth Next, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this very special 10th anniversary Youth Next conference. And it occurred to me, um, as I heard Dean Pianta say that Youth Next is turning 10, that you could say that we are now entering early adolescence, which seems particularly um, appropriate. So, um, Youth Next, as Dean Pianta mentioned, was founded in 2009 with seed funding from Altria and, and the vision of our founding director, Dr. Patrick Tolan. Um, with the founding of Youth Next, Dr. Tolan saw an opportunity to expand and apply the science of positive youth development to address fundamental challenges facing societies around the world. Through science, Youth Next enhances the strengths of children and adolescents while simultaneously preventing developmental risk. And our vision is that our nation's youth, a rich and often untapped resource, may flourish. Further, we aim to bring young people to the center of research, practice, and policy, ensuring that those of us who work with and support youth are doing so informed by their voices, knowledge, and expertise. Today, Youth Next's work focuses on three domains, as you can see up here. Educational systems with a concentration on middle school and making sure that every middle schooler has access to learning environments that are aligned with their developmental needs. Out of school time programs and settings because we recognize that Learning and development occur both in formal and informal and out of school time settings, and that the inequity in our school systems are often mirrored in out of school settings, thereby compounding already existing differences in opportunities. And the third area is community engagement, so youth civic and political engagements as reflected with the underpinnings of this year's conference theme. Inherent in the founding of the University of Virginia was a conviction that our youth's education is critical to sustaining our democratic nation, though as we know, there were many people left out of the founder's vision. And it is our dedication at Youth Next to make that vision more inclusive, including the voice of youth. We want to Ha harness the opportunities in schools and communities to ensure that every young person has the opportunities they need to thrive and to be the engaged, healthy, and active participants in democracy of which we know that they're capable and which, quite frankly, our society needs them to be. We see these three domains as intricately linked and working together along with the people in each of these systems to promote positive youth development. I also believe that youth development issues are social justice issues, and only through engaging and ensuring supportive developmental opportunities for all young people equitably can society truly advance. So Youth Next is dedicated to both conducting and translating high quality developmental science to help ensure advancement of that goal. So one of the unique, sorry, there we go, I forgot to make the wheels rotate as they intricately work together. One of the unique um, aspects of Patrick's founding vision for the center was that it would offer opportunities for convening researchers, practitioners, and policymakers, and young people in a single space to share knowledge and ideas about key issues facing youth today. 
Um, for those of us who attend professional conferences, whether it is in academia or, or in the practitioner world, we know that there are not many spaces in which those realms come together. And that has, I think, been a real key marker of what we have done. These are conferences from, or these are posters from the past six Youth Next conferences. You are today marking the seventh conference. Um, and in recent years, we've also entered, or I'm sorry, added young people more explicitly um, to this space as well. So today and tomorrow mark the seventh such conference as well as our 10th anniversary. And it also reflects the growing emphasis at YouthNext on collaboration to solve critical issues facing youth in society today. So today's conference topic came about as a result of two partnerships in which we're currently engaged. First, the UVA Democracy Initiative Center to Redress Inequity Through Community-Engaged Scholarship. The Equity Center, which is the easier and shorter name for that um, initiative, was launched this fall after nearly two years of planning with a charge to build a new model for how a public institution of higher education can share power with its local community in order to together tackle and address inequity. The center is unique in that it is jointly led by faculty and a community steering committee and takes as a starting point that our university must not only acknowledge its role in both creating and sustaining inequities in the community and region, but also must reshape its practice to bring resources to bear on redressing those inequities, not by acting as a savior, but by sharing power and acknowledging and amplifying community expertise and knowledge. And YouthNext is helping to lead the youth and ex education stream of Equity Center work with a focus on supporting educational pipelines and creating opportunities for young people to actively engage in identifying, researching, and creating and communicating solutions for the issues they face in their daily lives. Second, YouthNext is partnering with the Center for Race and Public Education in the South and Curry's Teacher Education Program on the Educating for Democracy initiative, which Dr. Harris will tell you more about in a few minutes. So thus, this conference not only addresses what we see as a critical issue of our time, but also reflects growing partnerships in which YouthNext is engaging to bring the science to bear on supporting youth engagement in civic issues and thereby fostering the health of our democracy while simultaneously promoting social justice. So a couple of logistical notes before Dr. Harris tells you more about this project. First, restrooms are located in the back of the hall. There are some restrooms to the left and to the right. There are no gender neutral bathrooms in this older building, but we encourage you to use whichever bathroom you feel comfortable with and identify with. After most of these panels today and tomorrow, we will have a performance by a young person, either in person or by video, related to issues of social justice. And there will be a 15-minute break after each of those performances. There will be time for discussions and questions after each panel. So we would ask that you, unless you have a specific clarifying question for a speaker, we would ask that you hold questions till the end of the panel when there will be time, and we will encourage discussion and questions amongst the whole group. Finally, um, unfortunately, weather, specifically snow in the Northeast and Upper Midwest, um, has hampered some of our panelists' travel, and there are some people who were not able to make it in today. We are going to be Zooming them in so fingers crossed that that technology will work, and please bear with us as we attempt to model some integrated, in-person, and technologically enhanced panels. <laughs> Finally, this conference has been a tremendous team effort, and it would not have happened without a whole host of support from amazing and dedicated people. So first, funding for the conference has been provided by the generous support of Altria, particularly Jennifer Hunter and Amber Roos, who from early on have recognized and supported the vision of YouthNext and have been its true champions. There are a host of volunteers here today, a combination of students and YouthNext affiliated postdoctoral researchers and others who are making sure that things go smoothly. So please thank them as you encounter them. They have, I believe, yellow yellow and green um, flags on their, on their tag, so please thank them as you encounter them today. Dr. Johari Harris, who will speak to you in a moment, has really been the intellectual leader of this work. So 
Great thanks goes to her for her vision for this conference and for bringing us together. And the Youth Next staff, particularly Crystal Hayslip, Martha Pullen, and Leslie Burreen, are the real muscles behind this conference. It is their sweat, probably tears, and I am hoping not blood, but fingers crossed, that have gone into realizing this event. So they all deserve more thanks than I or we can probably give them, and they all need to take at least a day off later this week, and that is an order. So now, please join me in thanking them and in welcoming to the stage Dr. Jahari Harris. Hello. Uh, <laughs> so my father often said justice is not a spectator sport. It requires, equity requires our participation. And I think in many ways, this is what this conference is about. The ways we participate to create a more just society and a true democracy. And while a lot of attention has been paid to the engagement part, the active part of engagement, we are really interested in the more subtle forms, including dialogue and the ways we listen and learn from each other, and how this may look different at different developmental stages. So here at Curry, with the Educating for Democracy Initiative, which is in conjunction with the Center for Race and Public Education in the South, as well as the Center for in Teaching and Instruct, I'm saying it wrong, and Stephanie's in the back, how do I say it? What's the full acronym? Curriculum and instruction, there's so many acronyms at Curry. <laughs> um, we are developing resources for K-12 teachers that present students at different ages of development with opportunities to engage in dialogue about current issues of race, justice, and human welfare. We realize these efforts must be merged with a critical historical lens. We cannot expect middle school students to debate the merits of Confederate statues if they do not understand the role of the lost miss cause and the reality that the central cause of the Civil War was to maintain the bondage of black Americans. We also understand it would be unfair for high school students to decide if affirmative action violates the 14th Amendment if they do not know the historical context of the creation of the 14th Amendment and its role in supporting the post-slavery Congress efforts in the development of the Freedmen's Bureau. So understanding these historical processes, the structural processes that shape the ways we engage with each other today, as well as the implications of our choices around us, is foundational to participation that's meaningful and liberating. We know all too well that blind participation has contributed to the dehumanizing practices that continue today. So the process of grappling with these issues of justice and human welfare is difficult regardless of one's age. But today's adolescents are continuously telling us that they're ready. Across the globe, young people are dialoguing and in engaging in issues ranging from racial justice to global warming. Rather than ignore these efforts, we want to support them strengthen them in the ways that they take into consideration their developmental needs. I'm really excited about this, this conference because we've brought together such a diverse group of practitioners, researchers, youth, to kind of all participate in dialoguing about this, these issues and how we support Ruth. So, in the spirit of that, I am excited to introduce the first panelist. But before we begin, can I have people move up to the front? We have some spaces available in the spirit of participation. <laughs> Who's going to do it? Who's going to move on up? I see people in the back. Thank you, Letitia. There you go, Alan. I know I'm calling out people by name at this point. <laughs> Who else do I know? Joanna, I see you back there. <laughs> Come on up, like we've got space. That whole table, y'all have a whole table in front of you we can go to right here. Yeah, I see you, let's do it. Let's, let's join in the, pre thank you Steve, like let's come on up. Come join us. <laughs> yeah, don't be shy, like we are family here, like come on up. Yes. Again, weather and traffic has affected who's been able to make it on time. Thank you so much. So with that being said, the first person, I, I'm excited to introduce the first panel and the first